You're listening to episode 15 of the D6 Podcast. Here's the encouragement I give you. The shortest distance between your child's heart, your grown child's heart, and Christ is you. Parents need to own that they are the primary disciples of their child. Our goal in parenting is not for our kids ultimately to get a great education, as good as that is. Our goal is not for them to be great athletes. Our goal is not for them to go on great dates and find a great husband or a great wife. Our goal is not for them to have a great career with a great job, making great money. Our goal is for them to love a great God. A great God, a great God. You're listening to the D6 Podcast. Here's your hosts, Ron Hunter and Jeremy Lee. This is the podcast that helps you build an excellent family ministry in your church. It's August. Uh, Hopefully by now things are blowing and going at your church. I know uh, you've been a pastor before, Ron. You know how important August is. Oh, yes. Yes. You know, parents are are, uh, so excited because the kids are leaving the house, getting back into school. They're not stressed over those odd schedules anymore. And, uh, you know, summer camps are over by this point, or hopefully over, and uh, college students are heading back out. And if you're a ministry leader and you live in a bigger town, that means more college students are coming back to your ministry, and that usually means just a tremendous amount of, of new young leaders coming back in to teach, lead, and be part of your church. It's, it's an exciting time for sure. Uh, and today's guest, uh, speaking of, of exciting is Phil Vischer, the gentleman who created VeggieTales. So this now, is the interview of the D6 yeah. podcast. This is the interview. I yeah. love this. I, I, yeah. I, you, you guys, man, there's no way. I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and tell people, make sure you're, you're able to laugh out loud wherever you're listening to this. Because if you're on a treadmill in the gym or, or you're someplace, you are going to get a little loud on this one. I guarantee it. Well, I bet people can tell, uh, as if you're a listener of the show and a regular listener of the interviews, I mean, I don't mind sharing with you the, the process by what we do is we, uh, we write up the questions, we, and one of the ways we want to make sure it's great content for you is we send them to the, the guest ahead of time, and we let them prepare their answers so that when they, uh, when they give that to you, it is, it is just rich. That's what I'm trying to get. Well, Phil was not having that. He was not going to go by the script at all. And uh, so when he started to just do whatever he wanted, he started to throw me off script. But then good things happened from it, and it was definitely one of my favorite interviews in my memory. Uh, And so after the break, you guys will hear from Phil Vischer, a.k.a. Bob the Tomato. And uh, hope you enjoy it. We'll see you when you get back. Are you looking for the right conference to attend this year? The D6 Conference is a family ministry conference designed for your entire ministry team. Come here from over 30 speakers and network with churches that share your passion for reaching families. Family ministry isn't just another program. It's one of the most important things your church can do to make a difference in your city. At the D6 Conference, you'll be inspired and equipped to take your family ministry to the next level. To learn more about the D6 Conference, just go to d6conference.com. Okay, so uh, I've never met in person my guests, but I've spent a lot of time with them in other (laughs) Forms and fashions. That was a good intro. Were you the guy hiding in my bushes for a week? In 1990, Phil Vischer created Veggie Tales. Never heard of that. I've I've heard of it. 
I'm not that familiar with it, but I've heard of it. It's an animated video series crafted to teach Christian values. More than 60 million VeggieTale videos have been sold around the world. But these days, he's got a whole new thing that's, I would say, just as good called What's in the Bible. And Thank you, you for also, saying that. I know, I've, I feel like I've, <laughs> I'm not just rubbing You don't feel yet, like you're going out on a limb. You feel like you could actually say that. I feel like it. You feel, okay, good. If and you jelly feel telly it, too. it must be true. <laughs> <laughs> if there's anything I learned from uh, Debbie Boone. This is going to be awesome, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> See, he does a podcast, too, so he knows how to mess, and I love it. <laughs> uh, okay, so, yeah. Phil, you have the Phil Vischer Show. Yeah. You discuss pop culture. Yeah. Media, theology, and Christian life. And just to be honest, I looked at all your topics, and I'm like... Bob the Tomato is getting a little racy. <laughs> you, you don't, it's all over the map. You're talking about like you got some well, hot hot you, button issues. Yeah, going on. you can't. You know, you can't live in a bubble. We live in the real world, and the real world is messy. And yeah. people want to know about you know gay rights and the new move for toplessness <laughs> in, among women in New York City. And these are things that I feel like I I just have to go there. You did, yeah. I have to. There you go. And a place you also went that I want to thank you for personally since I had yes. the chance. Hairbrush song. Thank you. Hairbrush song. Yeah. As yeah, a bald yeah. man. Yeah. I appreciate now, it. I had relatively, I did not have a ton to do with that song. because it, it was, well, I wrote the first. You crushed my dream, hopes and dreams Yeah, right I'm, now. I'm very sorry. Um, well, how did you end up with only hair on the bottom half of your head? <laughs> it's, it's, was that after the hairbrush song? I'm growing a Is donor it since patch. the hairbrush song? Uh, you know, I got to do it. I did you do. have hair on top of your head when the hairbrush song came out? Yes, I did. Actually. Okay. I did. Because you were in grade school. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how old you are, but it's been a while. I wrote the first, I wrote the first silly song. Um, the Water Buffalo song. Another and another then, classic. But my friend Mike is extraordinarily silly, so I challenged him to come up with the next silly song. And he came back, came into the office a few days later, and said, I was in the shower, and I was looking for my razor, and I couldn't find it, and I started singing, oh, where is my razor? Oh, where is my razor? And I said, okay, Mike. That's good. That's silly. But we don't want kids <laughs> running around the house looking for razor blades. Could you change it to something else? I love that. And he came back about a half an hour later and said, what about a hairbrush? That has two syllables. And that also raised the irony of a cucumber doesn't have hair. And there you go. Unlike a peach. So, you know, it really it, it drove the whole thing. The rest wrote itself. And so, just business question here: Does he get like uh, royalties on the hairbrush song, like forever, like the, like no. other music, like no. Taylor Swift? No, no. Unfortunately, at one point, we both signed our music publishing rights over to the company. But there was rights, I guess. What I'm saying. There were that, rights. The, the there silly were rights. songs had like silly songs had rights. Yes, but it's a mistake <laughs> to sign all of your songwriting rights over to a company that you're then going to lose in bankruptcy. <laughs> Let's put that in the category of ill-advised. I don't know if you'll ever have the opportunity to decide what to do with your songwriting rights, but putting them in a company that's going to go bankrupt is not what I would recommend. <laughs> this, this leads me to your testimony. <laughs> yes. Oh. I should write a country song about losing my songwriting rights. And then keep the rights yeah. to that. Yeah, and keep the rights, which would become a big hit. All my songwriting rights are in Texas. Actually, they're now in California. Or where are my songwriting, songwriting rights? rights? Yeah. Or where are my royalties? <laughs> where, where? So, you know, you turn on the TV and you hear one of your songs being played and you think, oh, well, five cents just went somewhere. <laughs> I don't know where. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. Okay. What are we supposed to be talking about? I don't know, but I had no idea this was going to be this fun. I'm I sorry. Mean, no. I just didn't know you, anything about you. Do you have a ukulele? This is going to be great. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I'm trying to tell you that I think you are very vulnerable because I watched your testimony, and I, I applaud vulnerability, and I think that was powerful to me. So thank well, you for that. You're welcome. I have a question, though, uh, because I am a fan of vulnerability. Sometimes yes. you can regret it. Do you have any yes. regrets? <laughs> Do I have any regrets about... Uh, no. No, I don't. And I think the reason is is that once you're vulnerable in the context of talking about your failures, not just your successes, you find you can connect to people on a much more, on a much deeper level. Yeah. You know, because everyone will... People will applaud your success, um, but it's your failure that that 
makes them identify with you. Wow. You know, that you're real. You're real when you fail. When you succeed, you're admirable. You're not real. Mm. <laughs> and so I discovered, because I remember I, I, I had only typically only talked about veggie tales when I did public speaking. And I hated public speaking because I'm, I'm very introverted. And I had never done it. I always avoided it. But then veggie tales became a hit. And then people wanted me to get up and talk about it. So I would mm. get up and I would talk about veggie tales. And isn't it great? And aren't we going to change the world? And they would clap and they'd get inspired. And so I talked even more and they'd clap and they'd get inspired. And then I went bankrupt. And then, right after I went bankrupt, Biola University asked me to come out and do their commencement address. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, I can't get them inspired about the thing I just lost. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> what am I going to talk about? And I, and I felt the only choice I had was to just tell them what I'd just been through. Mm. And I was convinced, it was about a 15-minute commencement address, I was convinced this has got to be one of the top five worst commencement addresses in history because it's <laughs> depressing. <laughs> and it's not, motiv it's not a motivational speech. It's not Mary Lou Retton telling them to go follow their dreams in a, a tiny little voice. <laughs> it's none of that. It's a guy saying, I was following my dreams and God let it all fall apart. Mm -hmm. And I lost it all. Are you ready to give up your dreams? <laughs> That's it. You said that at a graduation. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> That's amazing. And, and, and then I just thought, okay, well, that was a disaster. I turned around. I went back to sit down. And when I turned around from sitting down, the whole room was on their feet. Mm. Like the whole, the whole gymnasium was giving me a wow. standing ovation. Wow. And I thought, what the heck? You know, how did that just happen? And I had a 40-year-old dad come up to me afterwards in tears saying, we always talk about our successes in the church. We never talk about our failures. Thank you for that. You know, and then Willow Creek Church called and said, we just heard your commencement speech at Biola. Would you give that talk at Willow Creek to our ministry conference? I was like, oh, OK. <laughs> and then Christianity Today magazine called and said, we just heard your talk at Willow Creek. Uh -uh. Could we turn that into a feature story for Christianity Today? I said, well, OK. And then a publisher called and said, we just read your story in Christianity Today. Would you consider turning that into a book? And that led to me writing my book. Oh, wow. So pretty much the, my ministry over the last 10 years was entirely uh, born out of me talking about my failure, not my success. Because isn't it true that the lie that is attached to vulnerability is that it's weakness when yeah. it really is strength? It, it, it's honesty. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's honesty, and it's and it's the point. And it makes you strong. You don't feel like you can hold anything back, right? That You, you feel secure. There, There is security in... Uh, revealing what you've been trying to hide mm. yeah. <laughs> and discovering that the honesty is appreciated. You know, if everyone throws tomatoes at you and says, boo, you know, we really didn't want to know that you pick your nose. <laughs> that was not the kind of honesty we're looking for. Yeah. Then you might change your mind. But in, in the case of really, you know, showing our human foibles, um, we, we live in a, a celebrity Christian culture in America where we put people up on stage for being big successes, quote unquote. You know, it's just part of the American dream and the Protestant work ethic, and it's all mashed up with the gospel, and we want you to have been a big success. But we can't relate to those people. Mm. You know, so the honesty of being able to relate to someone is, yeah, you you actually think you're a terrible parent, just like I think I'm a terrible parent. <sighs> okay, now let's talk about parenting. Yeah. Let's have an honest conversation about parenting. So Yeah, I heard you in one of the videos talk about you went to go rent a car and the guy asked you what you did. And, uh, <laughs> and you talked yeah. about how you live in both worlds. Like yeah. in a certain world, you're kind of the stuff. Like a world like this. You yeah, know? yeah. You, there, are, there are worlds where I'm completely anonymous and, and worlds where I have a hard time getting through a hallway. Yeah. You know, because everybody wants to talk about Bob the Tomato. And in the worlds where everybody knows that isn't it true that you can kind of feel known but nobody really knows you yeah although as a as a very uh strong introvert i can pretty much feel that way anywhere anywhere yeah fair <laughs> enough but right now you're feeling that right now you're like this guy you don't know me you don't know me you why, why me? me we're just wasting we're just i don't know you we're just shooting the bull where's you, my when, is this 20 minutes almost yeah. over when's he gonna ask me to do the veggie tail impressions la 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 let's get over not gonna do it <laughs>
<laughs> Did you you made a rule? You made a rule? No, no, I will do it. You will. <laughs> if you really could, want you read to. Deuteronomy it, six and Bob the Tomato, please. Sure, no, I'm just <laughs> sure I could. If it would, would it make you like me? <laughs> no, I like you already. I, oh, okay. I really do actually like okay. you a lot more after this interview. <laughs> <laughs> you, you were just the Veggie Tale guys. Now I'm kind of really interested. So, so hey, that's cool. I want to party with that guy who's yeah. so, so introverted. What he doesn't want to party tonight? with anyone. Yeah. If if you yeah. did want to be with me, where'd we go? What'd we do? It'd be uh, fun. We would go to Disney World. <laughs> at Disney World this week, you're talking about biblical narrative and its role in the family. You said at Disney World? Is that what you meant I to said say? It, did I do that? Yeah, at you did. D6 this week. Yeah. You, <laughs> this is awesome. At D6 this week, you're talking about biblical narrative and its role in the family. Yeah. And uh, why is narrative so important? Well, it's story basically story. I mean, the center of what Christianity is about is relaying the gospel, you know, the good news. We've been given this good news that supposedly is good news. <laughs> the problem is news, you can only qualify whether news is good or bad when you put it in context, mm. you know, so you say, oh, that, that plane just blew up. Is that good or bad? Yeah. W well, if it's World War II and it was a kamikaze dive bomber and they were headed to the boat with your whole family on it, it's good news. <laughs> if it's your family's on the plane, <laughs> it's bad news. I mean, context Fair is enough. everything, yeah. and that's the story. You need the story surrounding the news to make sense of it. And we don't teach context very well, which is why quite often our kids end up more enamored in sports than in the gospel of Jesus Christ, because we don't have the big picture of the story that we're living in that makes the world make sense and makes the news good. Mm. There you go. There you go. So how do we find that in our families, though? How do we find what in our families? The narrative. Oh, well, you teach it. I mean, you, you show kids how the world works from a biblical perspective. You, I think you, I got it. I thought you were talking about helping families find, find their own story. Yeah, no, yeah, but well, you're no, it's, connecting to the bigger story. It's bigger picture. It's bigger picture. Perfect. Uh, the story of your own family is, is frankly, it's a mess. It doesn't matter. It's, <laughs> it doesn't it's matter a mess. Better. I wouldn't even. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want people to miss what's in the Bible and that whole deal. There's got to be somebody who's never, maybe one person who's yeah. never heard of it. Yeah. So and I then bet there's more than that. I stopped by your booth and there's a whole new deal. There so is. I'll there is. Lay it. Give me that sales okay. pitch. Lay okay. it out for okay. me. Okay. 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 Not too fast. No. I okay. Think you're gonna no. Go I get, you got like two minutes. I'm going to cram it all in. No. We got six. Seven. We got seven, seven. minutes. Okay. I'll talk slower. <laughs> What's your name again? Jeremy. Well, Jeremy. <laughs> Can you do it in the pop the tomato voice? I'm just kidding. No, it'd be Go. more fun as paw grape. <laughs> well, Jeremy, would you like me to tell you about the products that this personality is here to hawk? Hawk. Uh, What's in the Bible is a 13 DVD series that walks kids all the way through the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Answers big questions like, you know, defines terms. What is salvation? What is redemption? What is sanctification? Um, tells the macro story and how we fit into it. Answers tough questions like what are, what's with all the weird rules in the book of Leviticus and why do you say I have to obey some but I can ignore others? You know, those questions that the typical volunteer Sunday school teacher really does not want to have to answer on a typical Sunday morning. We answer them and that's a resource for churches to use. Um, Galaxy Buck picks up, it's, it's uh, Buck Denver asks what's in the Bible. The host is Buck Denver, who, if you're an older generation, he's Ted Baxter from the Mary Tyler Moore Show. If you're a younger generation, he's Stephen Colbert before he became David Letterman. <laughs> The, the basically the newsman who isn't quite as, as smart as he thinks he is. Anyway, and he takes us through the Bible or attempts to and other people help him. In Galaxy Buck, we take Buck Denver from what's in the Bible and we basically say, all right, what's in the Bible is orthodoxy, teaching right belief. Now we need to see what it's like to live that. We need orthopraxy, which is right practice, right living. And so um, Galaxy Buck is basically Star Trek and Star Wars wrapped around Billy Graham. So, <laughs> so the premise of Galaxy Buck is... I've got this image of Jedi Billy Graham. Yes, I know. It's, it's just, just hold it there. It's with the cross-shaped lightsaber. It's beautiful. Um, 
Sometime in the future, we've discovered there are people on other planets, like Star Trek, other races out there on other planets. And of course, we need a missionary board to go reach them. So they launched the Galactic Mission Board, based in Colorado Springs, Colorado, of course. And they send uh, ships with missionaries and relief workers out into the galaxy to, to minister to these people. And basically, it's Buck Denver wanting to be Captain Kirk. You know, mm. Buck Denver wants to be the man, the man <laughs> to accomplish it all. And so he actually has to learn my lesson in the first episode, which is the one that's coming out in October, uh, that uh, sometimes your dreams can be your worst enemy, and we need to let go of our dreams to really walk with Jesus. So he has a dream to do something huge for God, and it makes him miserable, and also makes him actually mistreat his friends, mm. which also happened to me. Um, and he learns that what's important is obedience. It's not outcomes, it's obedience. It's, it's tending the garden God gives you. And he learns that lesson, and now then going beyond that, he is discipled by an old hermit that he meets on another planet who's kind of the Yoda, you know, the little Yoda dude. And uh, he becomes the Luke Skywalker type. And so he disciples him to walk with Jesus and apply everything that he's learned about the Bible as they go on these adventures through space. So it's, you know, it's Billy Graham and, and William Shatner. That's awesome. On a, on a road trip. Um, I think I need to congratulate you. Thank you. I thought I was interviewing the VeggieTales guy, and now I realize I'm going to... I'm, I'm the VeggieTales guy. Yeah. You're, I'm the veggie you're Phil guy. Vischer, man, and oh, I'm a fan. Well, thanks. I'm, I'm a legitimate fan now. <laughs> Can't say I was before you came out here, but now That's good. I'm in. And also... After hearing the description... Winning people over. One, one at a time. talk show host at a time. And uh, I'm trying to compliment you. And now it's your what's in the Bible. I, I want that. So unless I can get a free copy from you, I'll purchase it. You can't get it from me. But there are other people at this show that you might want to talk to. What do right. I need to say to get it free? Can I have it for free? That's what I'm I just about. can't guarantee that'll work. What if I say Phil says... Say Phil sent me to ask you if you can have it for free. It still might not work. Well, who's the boss? I'm not the boss. This has been a great interview. It's I want to thank Phil Fisher for being it's here. Jesus, I'm trying to close out now. This is <laughs> You've done enough of this. Where's my ukulele? <laughs> <laughs> I always end every show with my ukulele, every podcast. I saw that. Yeah, yeah, because there's it. no better way to end a, a podcast than with a ukulele. There is one way. What? Singing the Where Is My Hairbrush song. Oh, where is my hairbrush? But I'm only one of those characters. See, that's um, the thing. Mike only wrote one line. Do you want to hear my one line? Yes. Quick, which character am I in the hairbrush song, and what is my one line? Uh, I, I, you were the VeggieTales guy. Remember, I wasn't that much of a fan, and now... You said you love the hairbrush song. I do. I love it, but okay. I don't know who's who. Okay. Studi... Oh. What? I'm two characters in the hairbrush song. The one kid in the audience busted you just then. That is awesome. Way to go. Lines. That is amazing. Two characters. Okay, Bob says, I gave it to the peach because he's got hair. But also, who's the other one that I am in that one? Huh? 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 Peach. No, I'm not the peach. No, good guess, though. Paw Grape's in that. Paw Grape is in that. Oh. Says, I think I saw a hairbrush back there. <laughs> That's... Yeah, that was yeah, that was my biggest, my finest hour. PhilVisher.com. Go see, yeah. listen to his podcast. That's the podcast. If you want your ears to burn, because I mean, he talks about seriously scandalous we, we, things. We talked about yeah. Mm -hmm. And then Twitter mm -hmm. at Phil Visher. <laughs> Thank you for being here. This was awesome. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. What's it like to be a member of the D6 Leader Network? Well, what if I told you that you could hire an intern for your ministry that would plan your sermon series each month and create amazing graphics to help promote it? What if that same intern helped you train your volunteers by writing an online teacher training every month that includes a fully produced video without you even having to touch it? What if that same intern created a fully designed parent resource that they can actually use to help them spiritually lead their family? What if that same intern was able to get you access to every main stage talk, breakout, or interview D6 has ever done at their D6 conference for your own training and development? That would be the best intern in the history of the world, right? Well, becoming a member of the brand new D6 Leader Network 
It's like hiring an intern to do all of that and more for around a dollar a day. We make your life easy. We make awesome easy. If you are a minister, you can go to d6leadernetwork.com to learn more. I can't believe that interview. I I laughed listening and preparing for this show. I laugh again today. This is unbelievable. You know, we always, always do a uh, follow-up interview, and there's no way we can put anybody following that interview with you and Phil Vischer. That, that is going to go down as one of my all-time favorites, Jeremy. Yeah, he what a cool dude. I knew absolutely nothing about him, but uh, that was that was a totally fun experience. Um, and next week's experience isn't going to be too shabby either. We're going to start with Shanti Feldheim. She was another great interview. We're talking about great interviews. She was definitely in last year's conference one of the speakers that just nailed it. And um, she's going to be talking about uh, getting inside the mind of a child. But then we're also going to be talking about uh, talking to Eddie Moody, right? That's correct. These are two renowned researchers in their field. They do regular academic and practical research. And uh, Dr. Edward Moody is a counselor. He's a professor um, and a chair of a department of counseling for his college. And he wrote a book that he's going to be talking through. And if somebody wants to go out and grab this book and go and kind of brush up uh, it fits exactly what we, we just dealt with with Phil Vischer. There are many millennials. My kids are millennials, and they were raised on Veggie Tales. You know, Phil Vischer now has what's in the Bible. He's constantly coming up with creative ways to engage our kids. And uh, so as we prepare for the interview with Dr. Edward Moody, I would encourage you to go out and ta- tackle his book, which the subtitle uh, is so cool. The title itself is Surviving Culture, uh, but his, his subtitle, uh, the, the premise of the book is How Do We Raise Kids in a Modern-Day Babylon? Uh, we think about David and his three friends and kind of being in a foreign land, a culture that's not our own. How do we tackle that? Uh, I would encourage you to go out there and grab that. There is a parent edition, and there is a student or a teen edition to that, and uh, kids, kids have given it great reviews. Parents are loving it, but... Uh, Two researchers next week, Shanti and uh, Dr. Edward Moody. Yeah, they can grab the book at d6family.com um, for sure. Okay, so let's just, I guess, since we don't have your short interview. That's right. We're giving it's people a break to today. That's right. You get a, hey, if you're on that treadmill, get off. It's, it's cool. Early, <laughs> early break. That's right. Only, only, only four miles today. If we don't have to work as hard, you don't have to work as hard. Get off the treadmill uh, and uh, stop walking the dog and just go on home. So we're going to be done. We'll see you guys next Tuesday. It's going to be a great show. Looking forward to it. Thank you for listening. You've been listening to the D6 Podcast. You can learn more about D6 at d6family.com. And if you're a minister, we invite you to join the D6 Leader Network by going to d6leadernetwork.com.